Yes. Tell me what's going on, my friend. Okay, I got a 2006 Ford Ranger XLT. Uh, it's got a four liter on it. Got extended crank when it's hot. First thing in the morning, starts up perfectly. Once I stop, I do a few stops during the day. I'll stop for half hour or so, go to get in it, and it just cranks and cranks. I'll shut it off, turn it back on, and it fires up. You'll come. And uh, it's getting worse and worse now. It's been, I've been, it's been going on for about a year or so now, but it seems to be getting worse. I tried when I first get the vehicle, I'll turn the ignition on, run, and let it sit for 15 to 30 seconds. And then shut it off and fire, and it fires up. Your question to me is what could be causing this. Is that correct? Correct, yes, yes. Okay. Well, the most common cause that we see is either a uh, fuel delivery concern, right? So with the fuel pump, um, yep. sometimes yep. that mass airflow sensor can go bad, causing a hard start. Um, you got sensors like the fuel tank pressure sensor. They Sometimes they can short out, causing a, you know, a little bit of an issue. Or... Another possible cause is that canister purge solenoid. Because uh, I noticed a lot of sensors that could be caused it. I'm just, it's like I said, cold first thing in the morning, or if it's been sitting all day, fire is right up. But it's only when it's warm. That's why right. I didn't know whether it'd be a, a cooling sensor or something that could be causing it. Or so you know, the problem that it happens intermittently and and just under certain temperatures or certain conditions, that's very common, right? So that, that doesn't tell us what component is bad. That just tells us that it is the problem is electronic or it's, it's sensor or a fuel delivery problem. Um, yes. You know, because people always they always resort back to, well, like I said, it only does it when X happens or when it's this temperature outside. And, 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 and that won't tell us that won't give us the answer that we're looking for. So that the key here is to A, check for codes in the computer. And B, we're gonna we got at, least, at the bare minimum check the fuel pressure when this happens. Have we have we done either of those? No, uh, not the pressure. No. Okay. I don't have a gauge to, to check that. I could uh, I could probably get one and and check that while I'm cranking. Yes, I could. Do you think it could be a mass flash, yeah, mass airflow sensor? Well, that wouldn't be my first. Um, you know, go to, uh, yes, it's, it's a, there's, there's a possibility, but as a technician, I wouldn't, you know, if there's no codes in the computer and if, yeah, if nobody, all, yeah. and if nobody has checked the fuel pressure, then no, I wouldn't just pull the trigger and replace that mass airflow sensor. I would at least check fuel pressure Try first. Fuel, fuel, fuel pressure first and see what that does. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You bet. It says key on engine off 60 to 65 PSI. Yep. <clears throat> so what I would do is, um, you said it does it only when it's warm? Yep. Like okay. said, first thing in the morning, it starts right up. If it sits overnight or sits for hours, mm -hmm. it'll fire right up. But if, uh, I do some stops at yards, and I might be half hour or so between stops. Right. And I go to start it up right away. It just crank, 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 crank. I'll shut it off. And I'll, it'll fire right up though. Second time, it's right. weird. You know, I'll be honest with you. It doesn't. It, it, it here's the thing. It it doesn't sound like we got a, a a fuel pressure problem. Usually, that only happens when it's cold. But that yep. still doesn't mean that you, you know you you still that you shouldn't check it. You still should check it. However, exactly. yes, I could, yeah. you might want to you, you know even before you purchase a fuel pressure gauge, you might want to. You know where the the canister purge valve is. Take a look here. The purge valve is usually under the hood, and it's going to be by the intake manifold. Something else, then. Yeah. Customer complains of hard starting issues when the when the fuel tank is is full or near empty. Although it's not exactly what you're experiencing, but I'm seeing here. Any time, whether the fuel is half full. Right. I gotcha. I don't want to get below a quarter tank ever, so it... And the point I'm trying to make to you is that this is, it, it is a common problem, and the, the yep. canister purge valve does go bad, causing a hard start condition. Okay. So let me just take a look here. Let me know. I'm going to let you know where it is. What you could do is you might be able to actually go right to it, 
and then just unplug it or disconnect it. And hang on here. <clears throat> Cause it's gonna feed basically basically it feeds the intake manifold. So yeah, it's under the hood. It's gonna be on the driver's side. Uh, canister purge. It looks like it's like right by the master cylinder reservoir or the master cylinder. Assembly, yeah, uh, okay. I think it looks uh, sort of like a little Dixie type ice cream cup type thing. It's yeah, I think so. Real small, yep. about the size of a shot glass or something. Yeah, okay. So if I just disconnect it, I mean, it might throw the check engine light on. If I drive it for a little bit to see if it acts up, and it, if it doesn't act up, then I know it's the valve. Yeah, that's correct. Now, keep in mind, so it's, pr it's probably going to have two hoses going to it, right? One's going to have manifold vacuum, right? Yeah, so if you unplug it, it it's gonna, you're going to have a vacuum leak. So <clears throat> you might have to just plug that, you, you know, put something in. <coughs> excuse so me, put something. That hose, yes, okay. Yeah, that's correct. <clears throat> and then... Um, just try to unplug the part that's coming from the, the fuel tank, right? So that way the, it can't, you know, leak fuel vapors into, or yeah, you could, you could disconnect that part that goes to the EVAP uh, purge valve and just leave it disconnected for like a week, right? The, the check engine light will come on because it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to notice that there's an evaporative emission system leak. But what we're looking for is to see if that takes care of the hard start. Okay. So yeah, I can just plug the one to the intake and leave the other one and see how it works. Say, I, I can clear a check engine light. You got it. Yep. yep. And if it works, then we're good. If not, then I got to go somewhere else. Yep, exactly. Okay. I can try that and see how that works then. Okay. Uh, appreciate it. I do. I'm Like I said, I would just kept checking and checking for what I could. Like mm -hmm. I said, I... I, it just blows me away that it. I, I turned the ignition off at the fire, and it fires right back up again after the first time, just crack and crack and crack it. So I didn't think it would be a fuel issue. I, right. But then, the, I mean, the canister purge valve could be doing that too. I guess. <clears throat> yeah. I'm not real good with that this stuff, but I'm. I, I understand most of what you're saying. Yeah, good. for sure. And uh, I guess I'll try that first and we'll go from there. That Hopefully that fixes it. If not, then I'll probably be calling you back and hopefully we can check something else. And in the meantime, if it doesn't, I'm gonna, I will check the fuel pressure anyway just to make sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, the trucks, uh, it, it's old, but like I said, it's very reliable and, and it's a very, actually in very good shape. It's not got that many miles on it for a, an 06. Only got ninety thousand miles on it. Right. I mean, it's my wife's, and she don't drive it that much. And now that I'm retired, we don't drive it much at all. But I drive it like twice a, a week. Yeah. And it's just getting to a pain now where once I get somewhere and it's, it's just pain in the ass to start it. <laughs> right. I got gotcha. you. So okay. Uh, is there anything else that I should check? At, meanwhile, or just just check that and we'll go from there. Yeah, just start with the basics and go from there. Okay. Sounds good. I'll try that, and uh, if and if it is that, I can just purchase the canister first valve forward and. Uh, yes, sir. Then. You got it. Okay. Sounds good. I appreciate it. All right. You're welcome. Good luck, and let us know if anything comes up. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. You bet. Bye bye.